what's up YouTube Jeremiah Hersey here and this video is the last video in a six-part series I'm doing on virtual tables with inside of DAX today we're gonna to be talking about the summarize columns function now the summarize columns function is kind of a built to be an all-in-one type function where you have the ability to group by just like summarize you have the ability to add columns just like the add columns function but you also have the ability to filter just like calculate table now the summarize columns function is designed to run queries it is not recommended that you use it uh, with inside of a measure and i'll talk about that a little bit later the reason for that though just a quick heads up is that um, if filter context caused by context transition it's not going to allow our table to filter and so we'll talk about that a little bit um, but just know that there is a lot with inside of this one function uh, too much to cover in one video but i'll talk about the different features that this function has so if you want to follow along in the video just click the link down below to download the pbix file and let's go ahead and get started So here I am inside the Power BI desktop, and once again, we're talking about the summarize columns function. So we're going to go up here and we're going to create a new table. So the summarize columns function, once again, has the ability to group by, like summarize. It has the ability to add columns, like the add columns function, and it also has the ability to filter, like calculate table. So summarize columns is going to automatically remove any row that has blank values and so what we're going to see here uh, is that you know as I'm dealing with um, the different columns I'm going to be adding with inside of this query that blanks are going to be removed and so something to take into consideration so let's go ahead and build out this table here so we're gonna I'm gonna call this summarize columns All right, and so let's summarize based on, let's do the product, uh, we'll do the class here. So we'll group by product class, and we'll also group by the year coming from our date table. There it is. And then we can also, you know, add that expression if we wanted to. So we can say, all right, this is going to be the amount column using double quotes to name the column. And then what's the expression going to be? Well, that's just going to be our total sales measure here. And so what you'll see is although the, there might be some blanks in the class, there are not going to be any blanks in total sales. Um, any blanks that were in total sales will be removed. And so as we look at this results in table, we can see they all have values here. But let's say that you do not want to, uh, you want to return everything, even if there's blanks. Well, one thing we can do is add the ignore function with inside of this calculation. So if we add ignore, what ignore is going to do is it's going to allow us to bring back any blank values that are associated with the amount. Okay, so we're going to use the ignore function here. And what you're going to see is that as soon as I return this, we're going to start getting some blank values in the amount column. So summarize columns by default removes these blanks, but we can bring them back using the ignore function. Now, the summarize columns function, once again, like I said, has the ability uh, has a lot of capabilities that we're not going to have time to discuss. Some of those capabilities are for roll-up or subtotal columns. And so you have the ability using roll-up add subtotal and roll-up group. These two functions with inside of summarized columns will allow you to create subtotals. Once again, we don't have time to go through that today, but I just want to let you know of the capability. So... We see the ability to group by specific columns, such as product class. We can also add new columns, such as the amount column here. And the third thing that I said that summarize columns has the ability to do is it has the ability to filter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here after the second category 
and I'm going to add a filter function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter down. Uh, let's do the customer table. I'm going to use the all function here to return all the values, ignoring any filters that might be applied here. We're going to go to the customer table. So filter all the customer table. What's the filter expression here? Um, let's do the marital status here. So customer table, we're going to do where the marital status is equal to single. Okay, going to close up that filter function and put a comma. There we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and return this. So what you're going to see is that the values here are going to change because now the filter of marital status is now being applied. So we'll let that run here for just a second. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to keep your eye on this number right here. So the class is L for 2005 and the amount is 41,945. Now, as I change this filter from single to married, all right, watch the value change here. So we can see that the filter is being applied. And so we can now see that changing to 37,000. So it has the ability to group by specific columns. You can filter, you can also add new columns. But one thing to take into consideration is that while summarized columns is extremely powerful, it does come with a strong limitation. It cannot be called if the external filter context has performed context transition. Okay, so kind of get an idea. Um, filter, the context transition is where the row filter or the filter that's on the row transitions into the filter context of the table. That is context transition. If that occurs, summarized columns will not work. So if you're going to be using these functions with inside of measures, it is recommended that you use the combination of add columns and summarize rather than summarize columns. If you're just running a query, summarize columns is going to work just perfectly for you. But if you're going to be using it in a measure, you have to make sure that context transition is not performed because it's going to cause your summarize columns function to not work properly. Thank you so much for joining me in this six part series on virtual tables. Look out for my other series coming up. I'm going to do a introduction to Power BI series, just talk about some basics, how to navigate around the, the different tools with inside of the Power BI desktop and the Power Query editor. So look out for that. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you give me a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. See you in the next one.